And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to All Sports West New York. Your buddy Bob Kishinsky. It's Super Bowl week, and in studio tonight we have with us Jay Skursky, the Buffalo News. We'll be talking about the big game, and then a little later on, Fred Jackson. He's on the road with a Rhymer furnace install. We gave that away on the Fred Jackson show. That's coming up a little later on in the show. Well, last night on Bucky and Sully, uh, Jerry Sullivan is in Arizona for the Super Bowl. He talked to Bucky Gleason about the festivities on day one. Uh, do you have My agenda is to go in? and to stake out Marshawn Lynch's podium or wherever they're going to stick him in the corner and stand there and see what happens. What's your, what's your take, Sully, on Marshawn Lynch and, and his whole act when it comes to the media? How do you, what do you feel about it? I think basically Marshawn Lynch doesn't want to let down the hoods that he grew up with in Oakland by seeming soft and, you know, being acquiescent to, to the bit larger culture here. You know, he said that he, you know, he doesn't want to be forced into doing anything. I honestly believe that. I think that he still sees himself as some sort of gangster, and he doesn't want to seem like he's towing the line. And whoever his boys are back home, he doesn't want them to, to think that he's, you know, he's giving in. And that's a really juvenile uh, and regrettable attitude. Jeff Nixon put a blog out today, you know, former Bill, who's very vocal voice of the former players, what, what he thinks that Marshawn should say. You know, there are players, foreign players, and a lot of people say he doesn't have to say anything. He, he has that right. I just think that you have some sort of obligation. You're not being forced, by the way, to talk. And he's not being forced to play football. But you know what? You, you, are, you do certain things as a player. You, you're on a team. You have to go to practice. You have to be on time. You're not forced to do these things. And talking to the media is part of this whole, whole deal here. So I think he's a clown. Bucky and Sully show right here on WBBZ television, Mondays and Fridays, live at 6.30, the encore of the Friday show, Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. And now with us in studio, we have my good friend Jay Skursky from the Buffalo News, who was on uh, vacation not too long ago with his lovely family. I'm sure you've got plenty of photos, <laughs> uh, which we won't show on tonight's show. But uh, Super Bowl week. Now, we were talking before we started about the All-Star Games over the weekend and the Pro Bowl and whether those have come and gone. So, but that was all just leading up. It was the appetizer before the main entree, which is the Super Bowl. And... Finally, this week, I assume they're actually going to talk about football and not whether they were inflated or deflated or... Hopefully. I mean, I think it's time to move forward. I think, you know, regardless of which side of the uh, debate you stand on, the whole de deflate gate issue, I think everybody can kind of safely say we're, we're tired of talking about this. It's an enough is enough and let's move forward. We, we've got a good game, a good matchup to uh, a really fascinating matchup, really, when you look at Seattle's defense against New England's offense and, and how those two things uh, go up against each other. So I think everybody's ready to move forward and, and focus on Sunday's game now. This game now, some people have said to me, well, Seattle's lucky to, be, to have you know, gotten to the game because of the way they came back against Green Bay. But I really feel, I mean, Seattle, they know how to win. I'm not a fan of Pete Carroll, but he wins. I'm not a fan of Marshawn Lynch, but he's tough to stop. I, I love Wilson. I think Wilson's a great young quarterback, and his record against Super Bowl quarterbacks is phenomenal. I, re I tell you, I know, I know New England's favorite in this game, but I like the Seahawks. And they've done it before, obviously. Last year, you know, you saw the way they handled the Hall of Fame quarterback and Peyton Manning. I mean, it, so I don't think they're going to be intimidated whatsoever by Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. I think this defense is playing. This defense thinks it might be the greatest defense of all time. I don't know that they're there, but they're awfully, awfully good. And when they, you know, when you're that good on that side of the ball, and then as you mentioned, they've got that strong running game that supports what they want to do through the air with Russell Wilson. They're a great team. I mean, it's no surprise. It's not a, not a shock, I don't think, to many people that they're back in the Super Bowl. You know, this is a team that we said it last year after they, after they routed the Broncos that if any team were going to be a team that could kind of duplicate or replicate what the, the 90s Bills did in terms of making a run to multiple Super Bowls, maybe four in a row, it was a team like Seattle who's got a young quarterback and who's got a nucleus in place that isn't going anywhere for a long time. You know, we saw in the, in the NFC Championship game how hard it is to get back. I mean, right. they very easily could have lost that game. But they've got the talent that, that you know, it, it, like I said, they, they've earned their way back here for sure. I think, you know, when you're facing uh, Belichick and you give him an extra week to prepare, that's always, you know, in, in most people's minds, that gives them an advantage because he's been known as such a great chessman. But Pete Carroll 
he's no, he, he doesn't have to take a backseat to anybody when it comes to coaching the game. I got to believe they've come up, they're going to come up with a scheme to try to stop that, that short passing game that Brady loves so much. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, the philosophy and the styles of the coaches couldn't be much different. You know, Pete Carroll's the cheerleader type, you know, the guy that, that you know, he's, he, I think he's in his 60s, but boy, he acts like he's in his 30s, you know, and then Belichick is the sort of hardline disciplinarian. And it will be fun to watch how those two guys match up against each other and, and what, you know, the Seahawks decide to do defensively to, like you said, take away that short passing game with Richard Sherman. How do they use him? Do they put him on Julian Edelman or do they leave him outside? You know, so the, those chess pieces will be very fun to watch. And I don't think Pete Carroll maybe all, all the time gets enough credit for his X's and O's because he is more of that motivator, that type of, that type of coach. And you're right, though. He, he deserves some credit as a, as a game planner. Have you ever covered the Super Bowl? Last year in New York. Oh, okay. So yeah. you've, oh, well. Yeah. Hey, they didn't send the young guy to the warm weather, so he did that. I know, right? Yeah. Well, Jay, there they, might, there's a chance of snow in Jersey we're sending you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, you know, I, obviously when the Bills went, I had a chance to go, and I went to a couple before that. And it's changed, I'm sure, even from that, from that time. Uh, it is really, it's a carnival atmosphere. It's almost tough for the players to actually concentrate on the game. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, media day, you've got people dressing up as superheroes and where's Waldo and it's a it's an absolute circus, you know, and it's not until I think probably Friday of, of this week that things will calm down for the players and then they'll really be sequestered, you know, starting Friday afternoon, Saturday will be a normal walkthrough where it's everything is closed to the media, but they've got media obligations really, you know, starting today with media day and then going through the rest of the week where it's much more than what they're used to on top of you know the the family who who is interested in and in maybe in town so absolutely there's a lot on the players plates until they get to the weekend when they can really bear down and, and then focus like for a regular game as as regular as yeah. the super bowl can be the, you know obviously seattle was there last year so the, this is not going to be anything new to them and i think with new england they've got a veteran team brady's been to uh, more Super Bowls than any quarterback in the history of the game. So there's not going to be much that happens this week. So I think this is going to surprise either team. I think their focus is going to be on the game at some point. Yeah, Brady and, and then Will Fork on the defensive side of the ball has been there for all of those as well, I believe, or maybe missed one of them. But they've got leaders on both sides of the ball, and, and they've made deep playoff runs before, even if they haven't gotten to the Super Bowl. And as you mentioned, Belichick's been through all of this a million times. So I don't think any of this is going to be too big for the Patriots. So Jay Skursky, the Buffalo News, uh, can you tell us what your picks going to be for Sunday's game? I, I think I'm going to take Seattle. I think, you know, I like the fact that they were able to handle last year uh, against New, uh, excuse me, against Denver, what they were able to do to, to Peyton Manning. As I mentioned earlier, I don't think they'll be intimidated at all by Brady. I think defensively, they should do enough to kind of keep the score close. And in a close game, I like them more because I like their running back, you, you know, their running game more. Yeah, I agree with you. I said I, I I don't, I'm not a fan of either team. I don't really have a dog in the fight, but if I had to just pick it on the merits of both teams, I think Seattle's more physical. I think they offer more threats. I think if you can stop Brady, Brady, you stop the Patriots, basically. And I don't think you're going to see Russell Wilson play a, a game like he played in the NFC Championship game with four turnovers. You know, they were still able to win, but that was probably the worst game he's played as a professional. I don't think we're going to see that again out of him. So, And he brings the, the added threat of not only what he can do through the air, but also he was the leading rusher among quarterbacks in the, in, in the NFL this year by a wide margin. Yeah. All right, we'll come back more with Jay Skursky. We'll be talking about the Buffalo Bills right after this on All Sports Western New York.